Welcome to our new Arise Bible study, Kings and Kingdoms. This is week one, and we're going to be reading about some kings in the Old Testament to see what they did and how it affected their kingdoms. Did you guys know that there were a lot of different kings in the Bible? Some were good and some were bad. And some were good and bad. What I really want y'all to see during this study is how their decision to follow God or not follow God actually affected them and their kingdoms. So before we get started, let's pray. Father, we just come to you and we thank you so much for the ability that we have to come together and study your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you will be with us during this study. I ask you to open up the ears and the hearts of everyone who's listening. Help us all to learn something from you. Help them not to hear me, but to hear what you're saying. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, here we go. So to set the stage, let's talk about what a king does and what their kingdom is, right? So a king, what is a king? Everybody shout out your answers. What do you think a king is? Okay, what does a king do? Okay, those are interesting answers. So the dictionary says a king is a person or thing that is regarded as the finest or most important in its sphere or group. And in the Bible, the king was the ruler of a certain land, right? And they were that land was known as their kingdom. What the king said was law for them, for the kingdom. And so you had to obey the king no matter what. Now, we don't live under a king, right? Not like in Bible days. There's not a king over us, but we have someone over us that the Bible says is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Does anyone know who that might be? Yell it out. Who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords? I hope you said Jesus because Jesus is our king. The Bible says in Revelation 15, 3, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. So Jesus is the King of our lives. He's the ultimate head of all of us, right? And he is whose law we have to follow. I want you to always remember who the king truly is, okay? During this whole study, never forget who your king is. And everyone yell Jesus, that's our king. Ready, yell Jesus, go. Yell it again, really loud, go. Jesus, that's right. Okay, but I wanna kind of flip the script and I want you guys to think differently about what a king is and what a kingdom is so that you guys can understand this lesson a little bit better. Okay, I want you to be able to relate to these kings in the Bible. So I want you right now to think of yourself as a king, okay? Put on your fake crown. Everybody's got their crown on. Here I am, the king, right? I'm the king and my life is my kingdom, okay? Everyone has a kingdom paper. So you should have a paper that says my kingdom on it. Get that paper. This is gonna be a blueprint of your personal kingdom. And in the center is your castle. Everybody see your castle in there? It's a really big house, it's super cool. Everybody has their own castle. This, we're gonna say, is your body, which the Bible says is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that's where you live, right? That's your body. And that's also your castle. So we're gonna say that's your castle. So you're gonna go ahead and maybe get some colored pencils or crayons. While I'm talking quietly, I want you guys to decorate your castles. Color it whatever color you want. You know, imagine your fanciest house, whatever you want, don't be boring. Make your castle great, okay? So let me talk about the castle while you're coloring. And let me talk about your kingdom. So your kingdom is what you have control over. Um, and that's gonna be your decisions, right? Everybody has their own decisions to make and that affects so many things in your life. Every day you make decisions that affect your life. If I choose to exercise, I am building my muscles, right? My physical muscles and it's helping my heart to grow stronger and that's building my castle stronger. If I choose to read my Bible and memorize scripture, that's building my spirit and making it stronger, right? But if I choose not to do those things, what's gonna happen? 
My muscles won't grow if I don't exercise. My spiritual muscles won't grow if I don't read my Bible. Eventually I'm gonna be weak, right? And it's not gonna work, my muscles won't work. As the king, put your crown on, as the king over your personal kingdom, you have the ability to make decisions that change things in your kingdom, okay? You may not see the changes happening overnight, when I go work out, I don't see muscles growing the next day. And if I don't work out, I don't feel weaker the next day. But over time, changes do happen. Over time, you'll be able to see what the effect is of your decisions that are affecting your personal kingdom. So around your castle, look at your paper again, you're gonna see circles. These are also part of your kingdom, okay? Um, these are things that are important to you. So I want you to think of the things that you make a priority in your kingdom. Maybe one of your circles can be the things physically that you make a priority. Maybe one of them can be spiritual things you make a priority. Where do you go? What do you spend your money on? What is important in your kingdom, okay? You're gonna fill that out on the circle. You can write it in, you can draw a picture of those things. Maybe if you read your Bible, you can draw a picture of the Bible, right? Maybe if you exercise, you can put in some weights. Or if you run to exercise, you can draw yourself running or just write the word running if you want to. Okay, but think about what's important in your life. What do you spend your time and money on? Where do you go the most? What do you care the most about? Okay, this is your kingdom. So you fill it in the way that you want your kingdom to be. So there's also some other buildings you see on your paper and you'll see some mountains. They have st their statues and we're gonna talk about that later. So don't do anything with that one yet. So everybody right now, pause the video and work on your kingdoms. Okay, I hope you guys made your kingdoms just the way you want, that your castle's decorated, that you have your circles filled out for what's important to you. Now, let's open our Bibles, because you know this is a rise, and you always need your Bible, okay? You need your Bible, you need your highlighter, you need pens. We want to read the Word of God, okay? So in our Bibles today, we're going to read about a king and his kingdom. So let's open to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 14. And we're going to start in verse 1. Now, is 2 Chronicles the New Testament or the Old Testament? Anybody just yell it out, old or new? Okay, I hope you said old because it is the Old Testament. Okay, so here we are open to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. This is the story of King Asa. Everybody yell, King Asa! Louder! King Asa! Okay, good job. So he was the great grandson of King Solomon. Wave your hand if you remember King Solomon, anybody? He was the king that asked God for wisdom, you remember? He asked God for wisdom, and he could have asked him for anything, but he asked him for wisdom, and God gave it to him. Well, Asa is about to become the king of a land called Judah. Look at this map. It shows the area of Israel, Judah, and Ethiopia, all the places that you're gonna hear about in this study of kings and kingdoms. Okay, let's read 2 Chronicles 14, verses 1 through 6. It says, Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his place. In his days, the land had rest for 10 years. And Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He took away the foreign altars and the high places and broke down the pillars and cut down the asherim and commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, and to keep the law and the commandment. He also took out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the incense altars, and the kingdom had rest under him. He built fortified cities in Judah, for the land had rest. He had no war in those years, for the Lord gave him peace. Wow. So back in Bible times, the people who didn't serve the one true God liked to bow down and worship fake gods, and they called them idols, okay? So they built altars to those idols, and they had these high places in the hills where they would go worship. But King Asa was a good king. He was faithful to God by taking away the foreign gods, and he removed the altars to idols and the asherim, which were female statues that represented fake gods to worship. See what verse four says? It says that Asa commanded Judah, commanded Judah to seek God and to keep the law of God. And it says that the whole kingdom, everybody say the whole kingdom, the whole kingdom had rest. 
No wars were happening at all. Why? Because the Lord gave peace. So the first thing that we can learn about being a good king is that we must command our kingdom to seek the Lord. Now remember who your kingdom is, right? Your own personal kingdom. Your kingdom is what you have control over. So you can have control over yourself. You can command yourself. In the morning, when I don't wanna get up early, I command myself, get up, Amy. Get up, Pastor Amy. Get your Bible, it's time to read. Chop, chop, get your coffee. Read your Bible, time to go, right? But does your body always wanna get up early and read the Bible? No, your body wants to stay in bed under the covers. It's really comfortable. I love the covers. But you have command over your kingdom. Did you know that? I have command over some things. I can make decisions in my own life and I am deciding to read my Bible, right? Okay, so you need to set a high standard for your life. As king of your life, Jesus is the true king, right? But as king over your personal kingdom, you get to set standards of living for yourself so that your kingdom can have peace. So I want you to get your highlighters. Let me find me a highlighter here. Yellow seems like a good color for today. And we're gonna highlight verse two through five in chapter 14, because it says, and Asa, did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. He took away foreign altars and high places, broke down the pillars, commanded Judah to seek the Lord. So that's what we're going to highlight, all of those things in there. It says in verse 5, he took out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the incense altars and had rest. So highlight verses 2 through 5, okay? Because this is giving us a clue, right? This is giving us the keys to how to be a good king that King Asa did. And what it says is, number one, seek the Lord, right? Number two, keep the law and commandment of God. And number three, get rid of anything that you might worship or put above God. So don't have idols, right? And then cut out on your cut it out page at the bottom. Cut out the bottom. And it has four things down there. And we're going to glue on the first three. Because so far, we've learned from King Asa to seek the Lord, that's number one. So you'll glue that in number one. We've learned keep the law and commandment of God. So you'll put keep God's law as number two. And then we read, get rid of anything you might worship or put above God, which means no idols. So cut out no idols and put that on number three. Now, I'm not that worried that you guys have little statues hidden in your room or under your bed that you worship, right? Nobody has those? Anybody? I didn't think so. But there are some things that we can start to love more than God. Hmm. What are some things that you might put before God that you don't even realize? Maybe you love Netflix more than God. You'd rather watch Netflix instead of reading your Bible or coming to church um, or seeking God. Maybe you love food more than God. Maybe you'd rather, you know, stay home and eat or go out to eat, they go to church or read your Bible or pray. Or sometimes we choose sports or video games, you know, anything like that, that we put above our relationship with God, above studying the word or above going to church. We have to be very careful because that can become an idol in our life. And we don't want anything to replace God or become more important than God in our lives, right? So look back at your kingdom. You've decorated your kingdom. See the statues and the buildings on there with the hills, okay? That represents the idols. So I want you guys to think about some things in your personal life that may be able to become idols, or maybe they already are an idol. Maybe you know that you choose every night to watch YouTube on your phone instead of reading your Bible. I don't know, we all have things, okay? But think about those idols and write them in on your paper, okay? We have to be careful not to make an idol. So after you write in something, I want you to take a big red marker or pencil, and I want you to put a big red X right over that idol, because we're gonna remember not to have idols and not to put things before God, okay? So fill out your idols or things that could become idols, things that you're being careful not to make idols, and then put your big red X over the top, okay? Go ahead. Okay, awesome job, we're back. Now, let's keep reading and see what happens next with King Asa, okay? So we are now to 2 Chronicles chapter 14, and we are at verse seven and eight. 
Everybody, look in your Bible. I want you to follow along with me, okay? Don't just let me read it, but you open your Bible and you read it for yourself. Here's what it says in verse 7. This is King Asa talking. And he said to Judah, which was his kingdom, let us build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, gates and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us peace on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah, armed with large shields and spears, which is why I brought my shield and my spear. And it says he had 280,000 men from Benjamin that carried shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of valor. So Asa built cities and he fortified his land and he gathered his army so he'd be prepared to fight for his land just in case he needed to. God had given him rest, but he was preparing. So why could he do this? Why could he prepare like this? The Bible says because he sought the Lord and because God had given him rest on every side. So let's keep reading. King Asa was making good decisions so far, right? So far concerning his kingdom, he was doing good, thumbs up. And it was getting stronger and stronger. The next thing we can learn is that we need to build and prosper. So cut out from your cut it out page where it says build and prosper and glue that to number four. That's the fourth thing we've learned from King Asa on how to be a good king that serves God. So you should have seek the Lord, keep the law and commandment of God, get rid of anything that you might worship. So no idols and build and prosper. So let's look at the circles in your kingdom. Those are the things you put that were important to you, right? Did you put some good things? Are you prospering and building what is right in your life and making it stronger? Do you build and prosper in your spiritual life? Did you put something in one of those circles about Bible reading or going to church or praying? Are you making that part of your life stronger? What are some ways that other ways you can build and prosper? Think about your physical life, your exercise, what you eat, right? Think of how all the different ways you can build and prosper. You can save your money and you can give your money because the Bible says when we give, it comes back to us, right? God wants us to be givers. So we should be good stewards of our money. That's another way that we can build and prosper. Okay, so let's read on. So far, so good in Asa's kingdom, right? And let's see what happens next. Can't be great forever. So 2 Chronicles chapter 14, now we're in verse 9 and 10, and it says, Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots, and they came as far as Maresha. And King Asa went out to meet him, and they drew up the lines of battle in the, va in the valley of Zephath at Marasha. That's a lot of big words, guys. Okay, you try to say that three times fast. Zephath at Marasha. Zephath at Marasha. Zephath at Marasha. Did you say it? Yeah, I didn't say it right either. Anyways, so here we are. It's bad. The rubber meets the road. It's time for battle. People have come against them. Okay, look at the map. I'm showing you the map. Do you see it? Guys, Ethiopia was huge. The land of Judah, tiny, tiny. Okay, remember King Asa only had 580,000 armed soldiers. But how many did it say the Ethiopians had? Over a million. That is a lot, guys. It's a lot more than what King Asa of Judah had. Okay, so this is getting intense. We have to keep reading to see what happens. Let's see what King Asa does, okay? His kingdom is under attack. What is he gonna do? Okay, let's find out. Second Chronicles 14, verse 11. It says, and King Asa cried to the Lord his God, O Lord, there is none like you to help. Between the mighty and the weak, help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you. And in your name we have come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against you. Boom, there it is. Asa follows his very own command. What was number one that we glued on there? Pray, right? Seek God. And that's what King Asa did. He cried out to God. He was in distress. They were coming against him. He cried out to God and praised God and he trusted God. So let's read verse 12 through 15. I can hardly put this story down, guys. Here we go. Verse 12. It says, So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians before 
Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. That means they ran away, guys. Asa and the people who were with him pursued them as far as Gerar, and the Ethiopians fell until none remained alive, for they were broken before the Lord and his army. The men of Judah carried away very much spoil, and they attacked all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of the Lord was upon them. They plundered all the cities, for there was much plunder in them, and they struck down the tents of those who had livestock and carried away sheep in abundance and camels, and they returned to Jerusalem. Whoa, so even though they were outnumbered, God helped them. They won, they took spoils, which is treasures. Why, why could that happen? It says the fear of the Lord was upon them. It was a miracle. And then they just returned home like no big deal. That's what God can do. Isn't that amazing? He can win even if the odds are completely stacked against him. God can help you win even if the odds are completely stacked against you. 580,000 against over a million and God still wins. Okay, let's move on to the next chapter and see what happens, okay? Chapter 15, verse one. The king had a great victory, right? He trusted God, God came through. Now, verse one through seven of 15. Let's read what it says, okay? The spirit of God came on Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, hear me Asa and all of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when in their distress, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. In those times, there was no peace to him who went out or to him who came in. For great disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the lands. They were broken in pieces. Nation was crushed by nation and city by city. For God troubled them with every sort of distress. But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Interesting, the prophet says basically your decisions matter. How you run your kingdom matters. If you stay with me, I'll stay with you. But if you leave me, I'm leaving. I will not be there to protect you. That is a warning, right? And we need to pay attention. Let the red lights be going off. Woo, 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 woo. Warning, warning, right? Pay attention. The prophet is giving the king a big clue on how to succeed and have peace. Follow God, keep his commandments, seek him. It's King Asa's own advice coming right back at him. Let's look at verse seven again, because this is your memory verse, okay? I want you guys to highlight it. Maybe you can pick a different color than you did last time. And let's highlight 2 Chronicles 15, seven, okay? It says, but you, everybody say you, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So let's say it together since this is our memory verse, okay? Second Chronicles 15, seven. But you, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. One more time, even louder, ready? Second Chronicles 15, seven. But you, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Awesome. The prophet says, be encouraged, take courage. Don't be weak or fall from fear. Why? Because your work that you're doing right now, your work at doing what is right is going to be rewarded. In other words, I believe he was saying, don't quit now, okay? Just because you've had a big victory, don't stop following your good advice and seeking God every day. Don't stop doing what you know to be right. Don't weaken your faith. Don't stop when you're going so strong, okay? That is for us today, okay? Whether you're facing a huge army that's outnumbering you or a huge problem that seems way too big for you, or if you just had a really big victory, don't stop fighting with your faith, okay? Don't be weak. Don't forget to do these simple things. Seek God, keep his commandments and pray and build and prosper. Don't be weak, strengthen your arms. Everybody look at your neighbor and show your muscles and tell them, strengthen your arms. 
Say it louder. Strengthen your arms. Now tell them, don't be weak. Don't be weak. Tell them, don't stop doing what is right. Yell it, don't stop doing what is right. Good job. I hope you won't be weak. Show your muscles. All right, let's see what happens next. Let's read 2 Chronicles 15, 8 through 15, okay? He just had a big victory, right? Let's see what happens. Verse eight, as soon as King Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Azariah, the son of Oded, he took courage and he put away the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities that he had taken in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord in front of the vestibule of the house of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those from Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, who were residing with them, for great numbers had deserted to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord was with them. They gathered at Jerusalem in the third month of the 15th year of the reign of King Asa. They sacrificed to the Lord on that day from the spoil that they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart, with all their soul, but that whoever would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, should be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. Wait, what? Put to death? Is that really what it says? Do I need my glasses? Well, I definitely need glasses. But listen, it really says that. It says, put to death, that they had to seek God. Okay, let's look at verse 14. They swore an oath to the Lord with a loud voice that was shouting with trumpets and horns, and all Judah rejoiced over the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart and had sought him with their whole desire, and he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Wow, so the prophet coming and encouraging King Asa worked. He went and cleaned up all the new lands that he had just conquered and he commanded that they serve only God and he removed the idols and they went even further and made a covenant to seek the Lord with all their heart and all their soul. And they said, anyone who didn't seek God was going to be killed, killed. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's a big deal. Everyone was forced to do the right thing and to seek God. Then God gave them rest all around. Rest, everybody yell rest. Awesome. I can use some rest. Anybody need a nap? Okay. Maybe later. All right, so let's keep going. Finish the story. Last piece of scripture. Second Chronicles 15, 16 through 19. And it says, Even Maka, his mother, King Asa removed from being queen mother because she had made a detestable image for Asherah. Asa cut down her image, crushed it, and burned it at the book Brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of King Asa was wholly true all his days. And he brought into the house of God the sacred gifts of his father and his own sacred gifts, silver, gold, and vessels. And there was no more war until the 35th year of the reign of King Asa. I love what it says. The heart of King Asa was wholly true all his days. That should be our goal, guys, to keep our heart wholly true towards God all of our days. Will we be perfect? No, we will not. But we can try our best to seek God, to seek our God only, right? And to keep our hearts wholly true, wholly pure and right before God. Now, although this is the end of our story for tonight, this is not the end of King Asa. Miss Jessica is gonna pick up with chapter 16 next week, and you guys are gonna be super surprised when you see what happens. I was not only surprised, I was also a little bit upset when I read what happens next. But don't read on until next week, okay? We're gonna to talk to you about it. So let's recap what we learned about being a good king from King Asa. Let's look at our papers, number one through four, that we glued on, that we learned from him. Number one, say it with me, seek God, okay? Number two says, keep God's law. Everybody say, keep God's law. Number three, no idols. Everybody yell it, no idols. And then number four, build and prosper. Now that doesn't just mean with a hammer and build physical things, right? Build your spiritual life. Build and prosper, doing the things God has called you to do. Now, what did God do when King Asa did all these things? The Bible says he gave what? 
peace and rest. Everybody say peace and rest. Good job. Now, there's some small group questions you can answer, you can talk about it. There's some challenges for you to do this week. So you guys have fun. I love y'all. I had a super fun time learning about King Asa and I can't wait until next week. Bye guys.